back to ARC Tutorials. This is Top 50 Agile Interview Questions with Answers. If you haven't checked out the first four parts, I'll request you to kindly check them out so that you have continuity in your learning. This is the part five and you can get this entire PPT as ebook for free at arctutorials.gumroad.com. Make sure to get your free copy. All right, so the first question from part five is, what is the definition of done? Now, this is a very, very uh, subjective question, okay? Now, the way you should answer is that the entire Scrum team decides on checklist for completing a story, all right? So, let's say in some enterprises, they will say that only development work should be done. In some enterprises, they'll say, no, QA should also be done on the story. In some enterprises, they will say that it has to go to a higher environment like QA or UAT, deployed. So the definition of done can vary between enterprises and different clients. But overall, the the agreement or I would say that the entire scrum team comes together, decides on what they call it as definition of done. What is the checklist? Right. So that checklist varies like it should have all the requirements covered. It should have unit test. It should have end to end test. It should pass the build. Code review should be done. QA should be done. And finally, it should be deployed. These are the standard uh, checklist points that are covered in a story. What is backlog refinement? Now, product backlog refinement is the act of breaking down and further defining product backlog items into smaller precise items. This is an ongoing activity to add details such as description, order, size, attributes often vary with the domain of work. That means you take the stories, you add more details to it, add more screenshots, or add more acceptance criteria. Uh, basically, refinement is nothing but you work on the stories. If you find some stories to be too big, you can break them down into smaller stories. You add a lot of details to it, like the environment, the URLs, the credentials, whatever details are required to get the stories done. Basically, that is called as the backlog refinement. How do you approach daily scrums with distributed teams? This is a very, very interesting question and often asked to see your understanding because most of the development teams would be remote or spread in different offices. Distributed teams use collaboration tools like Jira, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Google Hangouts or Meet for tracking work, video conferencing and screen sharing. Here you will talk about the different tools that you use to conduct the daily scrums. Some of them include Microsoft Teams meetings that you set up on a daily basis. During those meetings, you would share your Jira, screen, Jira application and share the screen to walk through the board. If you want to take some notes or capture some notes of some document, you can do that in the Confluence page as well. So talk about different tools, talk about different applications that you use on a daily scrum meeting. Can you draw an example of a scrum team's Kanban board right now? Now, this is a real time question that is often asked to see if they have really worked and they have some understanding. Now, here the interviewer is trying to engage you to test your knowledge on scrum board. OK, and they also want to know how your current project scrum board looks like. So some of the columns that you should talk about in your Kanban board are backlog of tasks, right? That is the to do list. Then you have the in progress. Then you have the code review. Then you have the QA or the testing and finally done. Right. So these are the five common columns that are uh, present in almost most of the clients or the enterprises that I've worked with. Lastly, also talk about the team members and their skill set right so you can talk about that also as part of your kanban board that these are my scrum team they'll be working on these particular columns what is an acronym for invest in scrum invest acronym describes the essential characters of a user story i stands for independent that means the story can be self-contained can be worked independently negotiable that means until becoming a part of an iteration, user stories can always be changed, rewritten, or the acceptance criteria can be updated. Valuable. A user story must deliver value to the end user or to the end product. 
estimatable that means you must be able to estimate it or size the story in based on its complexity whether it is small medium large extra small extra large etc the stories needs to be small user story should not be so big to become impossible to plan or to complete it so it should be just right enough that you should be able to work on it if the story is too big we need to break it down into smaller user stories the user story should be testable that means whatever functionality we are developing we should be able to thoroughly test all the happy path as well as the negative path so that is the acronym for invest independent negotiable valuable estimatable small and finally testable that is invest why aren't user stories simply estimated in person hours this is an extremely important uh, question i would say this is to see your real understanding have you really worked on a scrum team or not so everybody should know this answer 99% it's not a good idea to estimate based on person hours right that means what is person hours that means let's say you have five development team members they are working for a one sprint that is two weeks right two weeks have 10 working days each working day is 8 hours so 8 fives are 40 right so you have 40 person hours available in that sprint but essentially it's not a good idea to go with person hours because some stories may span much more longer time right so you cannot hourly basis besides you cannot time bound and you this is the stories are based on the gut feeling that how you how soon you can complete the story but sometimes your stories may be too complicated will take long time sometimes you don't have the necessary um, say licensing infrastructure technical setup development setup etc so you may run into blockers or impediments even if you don't have any blockers or impediments there are other things it would become more like a micro management if you go by person hours and we don't do that right so we go by the complexity of the user stories that means how complex a particular story is and then we size it based on small medium or large so that's why you should explain that that's why we don't do the person hours estimation what metrics would you assess the value of a user story now there are quantitative as well as qualitative measurements that can be used to assess the value of a user story some of the user stories can be mapped directly with your revenue how much conversions how much revenue has this particular feature brought in the story has brought in how much process improvement has happened how satisfied a customer is with the particular user stories deployment has it added into new signups has it increased in positive customer sentiment so there are different metrics that can be calculated which are both quantitative as well as qualitative some stories you can put a number like say how many sign ups happened because of this how much how many people signed up or how many people paid and become a paid member through this particular story so though some can be measured in numbers some are measured in qualitative or in terms of sentiments like how is the customer feedback how how satisfaction rates have gone up so those are the things in terms of assessing who assigns user stories or tasks to individual members of a development team so remember this question is often asked to see whether how your team is currently working so the way you should answer is the development team is a self driven and self organized team of team players the development team members will pick their own user stories from the board and start working the development teams are self organizing that means once they are done with the ticket they will take up a new one from the to do which is ready we do not uh, believe in assigning a user story to a particular team member however there are some instances where let's say a particular user story a was done in by a particular team member it's a continuation story it makes sense that that particular developer takes that ticket but again we do not assign user stories or tasks but the development team drive it themselves how do you deal with team members who are cherry picking on tasks or user stories right so what is cherry picking that means some development team members will always pick easy or simple tickets always and they don't want to do certain piece of work 
So that is called cherry picking. Now, how do you avoid it? Training, right, is the best way to improve the development team. You make them aware of the development process of the audit history. You talk to them about the issues they are facing. We talk to them about how the process should go or what is their comfort area, what is their issues or what is their impediments in picking other stories. So training is something that will improve this particular issues that of cherry picking stories. Should you check a team check a team's health during a sprint retrospective? Absolutely. Right. That is something that a lot of scrum masters don't do it, which should be encouraged, which is measuring the health of a scrum team. How comfortable they are. Are they satisfied with their work? Do they need any training? Do they need any tools to improve their work? Do they need uh, any just engagement? Do they just need any leaves, right? Or some personal time off? These are all things which adds up to the health of a scrum team. So as a scrum master, as a scrum team member, you should always at the end of the sprint retrospective talk about the team's health as well. That includes both mental, physical health. All right, so that was the end of part five. Thank you so much for joining in this particular series. I hope you learned. I hope this series benefits you. Please do check out all the five parts. You can get this entire PPT as an ebook for free at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any questions, if you need help in preparation, please write to me at surya.arad at gmail.com. I'll be happy to guide you in your career. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for liking these videos and supporting me. Keep supporting me. Thank you so much. See you in the next series.